Hello and welcome to another sewing vlog. In today's video, I'll be making a jacket and I want to make a jacket that works for every season, depending on what fabric you use when you make it, of course. And I'm going to be taking inspiration from this jacket, now this coat, that I made my first year in fashion school because I think it is iconic like I think it's super cool but I don't really have an occasion to wear this coat obviously I could wear it whenever I wanted to but I don't really wear it it's a very statement fashion piece so I'd like to take some of the elements that I really like about this coat and make it into a jacket that I could wear every single day in every season so the elements that I'll be taking from this design and putting into my new design of a jacket are the sleeves I think the sleeves are really really cool. I love the shape of them. I love the raglan cut seam and I also love the general body volume. It's an oversized fit and it's kind of like a play on volumes a lot with the cinched waist and like the belt on the chest and I do love that but I also feel like the belt on the chest is cool, fashion-y, edgy but on an everyday basis I'm not gonna be like buckling up you know to go out. So I'm gonna keep the belt on the waist and then the body volume. And instead of having it as a coat, I'm gonna make it as a, like a standard jacket length to the hips. So I've made a sketch, I'm gonna pop it here. And as always, I'm gonna start with making my pattern, my prototypes, and I'll explain the whole process. And of course, when this jacket is done and the pattern is finished and all that, you're gonna be able to download the pattern on my website, studiocarolinashear.com. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what I have done, I get that this is really difficult to see for you, but what I have done, this is my old pattern piece back, and I've traced this, like especially the armhole up here, onto my new construction, and now I am tracing this onto a pattern, like to make the pattern piece for my new design, but I'm keeping this armhole and then for my sleeves, I'm literally just gonna take these sleeve pattern pieces, retrace them. I think I'm gonna shorten them a little bit because they're a little long. Um, because like, again, this is a very oversized fit. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just taking this old design and reworking it to fit with my new design, merging the two. So I'll use this old prototype um, to cut my pieces for the jacket and it's a skirt so the panels of the skirt are kind of cut unbiased but this is the straight grain this is the back center back so I know that this is cut on the straight grain so I'll align my pieces with this and I'll cut as much as I can from this old prototype because that's a good usage of the fabric and I know I should have ironed this but I'm a little lazy, okay? Don't don't come for me. These are the pieces with the pattern still on them and I, this is cut off fold and then I'll take the pattern off obviously and draw in all my lines like I've cut my notches but I just want to show you kind of the layout so we have the back upper back and then we have my lower back and I have a seam here because this is 
the front. The front piece looks like this. This is my raglan cut here, my neckline. Hang on, it's not there. Okay, so I actually forgot to curve this. In my sketch, I have a curve, so I'll just curve that. Um, and also I'll curve it down here. But I wanna talk about this pocket situation here because I think this could potentially be interesting. This is how I do pockets uh, when they're like integrated or whatever. So you, this could also work for a side seam, for example. But for this uh, instance, this is a this is my waistline. This is my small hip and it ends on my large hip. And this, you can see that this is not straight. This line is straight and this line is straight and this one goes up because this is my bust dart value. So what I've done is here, I have the bust dart that goes either like this, like this, based on your block. You can also see that this line is curved upwards. And I have pivoted this value down to here and I'm going to make it disappear in this line. This is why I also have a line on the back to kind of like match them. And now for the pocket. When I make a pocket in a seam like this, this could be a side seam as I said before. I add one centimeter just where the pocket bag attaches. So this is my pocket bag. It's gonna attach like this. Hang on, like so. And the reason I do that is because this one centimeter is going to go into the pocket, like it's gonna go inside to the pocket. Meaning that this lining fabric won't be visible from the outside. So if you've ever put a pocket like this in a side seam, and when you move, your lining fabric kind of peeks out, your pocket opens up, and it just doesn't really like look super neat, just add one centimeter like this, where your pocket position is, like where your pocket bag attaches. And then the problem is solved. And then this is my back sleeve, like it is massive and curved. And this is my front arm or my front sleeve. And I'll sew it together on this curved line, giving it kind of like a banana shape. Now what I'll do is I will take off my pattern pieces. I'll draw in my lines, I'll iron this fabric and then I will sew my first prototype. panels this is my pocket you see my pocket sack inside and this is my little shift here that I did like the one centimeter I shifted down and then the one centimeter here and this just makes that pocket sack the lining of the pocket sack not visible it also makes this seam here not visible it's just a bit of a nicer finish and you could even make this longer like I'm potentially gonna make this on this on this side slightly longer because I feel like you can still if this is like hanging open that's still gonna be visible I don't know we'll see what it looks like on on the inside here you can see the one centimeter shift down there as well bring this down so this is what it's looking like I also I don't make a belt because I'm just gonna take one that I have I actually love this I think it looks so good it's 
exactly what I wanted. <laughs> the back silhouette is really nice. It's so difficult because I'm just looking at this tiny screen and I'm just like, oh, is it good? I don't know. Got the bias binding. Got the banana shaped sleeves. I think maybe they could be bigger. The back silhouette is really nice, I think. Like, it's just really, I don't know. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna now make my second prototype, my changes on this one. I have made my little list here of things that I am changing. We have the neckline, it needs to go up. This is a little too low. I think it looks good in the back. Like that's an okay dip. But the front, also it's not very round. Like it has this angle here that's kind of weird. So I want to bring it up like to here. Um, so it's just a bit more warm and comfortable. And then also for the sleeve, it is way too long. You can see that this is where the arm ends. Obviously on me it looks fine because I have really long arms because I'm a tall girl. But it needs to be shorter um, to fit like um, average arm length. So that's happening. And also the belt is being moved up a little bit. But yeah, also I'm like kind of considering making the sleeve a little bit larger. Just so it's a bit, little bit more dramatic, but I haven't decided yet. Otherwise, I think it looks good. I love it. I'm gonna move on to make my second prototype now. I've made my little list of changes here and I'm going to update the pattern. So my pattern is updated and I will now make my second prototype. Um, so this is my normal prototype fabric, but I feel confident enough with my first prototype that I'm going to go straight to real fabric, like, or I mean, this is real fabric, like final fabric, nice fabric. And I think I am going to, after this prototype, I'm going to make, well, this is going to be like a jacket that I'm going to use, so it's not really a prototype. After this jacket, I will make the sewing tutorial. So I'm going to make my sewing tutorial with um, this fabric. You can't see it here because it is really dark. Hang on. That's a little better. Still can't see that this is green, but whatever. That's what I'm going to do with my sewing tutorial because... Obviously, this is really bad lighting, but I think that seams are gonna show up nicely on this. And for my jacket that I'm gonna make now, that is not gonna be in the song tutorial, I am going to use this white tweed. I'm gonna make a winter jacket, essentially, now, and then for my song tutorial, I'll make a fall jacket. And since this, because this is thick, this is thick tweed, warm. So, I'm um, to make this even more wintry, I'm going to use this for the sleeves. I don't have enough to use it as lining for the body. So for my body, I am going to use this as my lining. It's just a white cotton. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So here you can see the tweed a little bit closer. It is a viscose wool polyester blend and it has these golden threads going through that shimmer a little bit um which i think is really it's gonna be a really nice winter jacket 
And then, yeah, my linings are these two. So I think that's a nice combination. Obviously, this is a little yellow compared to these two, but you're not gonna see this because it's gonna be in the sleeve, so it's fine, it's okay. And then for my piping, I wanna use a black piping, I think. And I think I have some black piping, so I need to go dig that out. So this is my elastics and piping box. I have a little bit of brown piping. Ah, look, I have so much of this. Okay, that's amazing. That's definitely gonna be enough. Okay, ignore, ignore the mess. Okay, ignore. So we hide it, close it, hide it. Don't look at it anymore. So I've mentioned briefly that I am a tall girl. Like I am taller than Diana, uh, my mannequin. And that doesn't just mean that I am taller on the height. Like everything about me is taller than your average person or your average female. So like between my bust line, I have more space to my waistline than Diana has. So I know that I am taller than most of the people that sew my patterns. So it doesn't make sense for me to make the patterns to fit my body length. It makes sense for me to make my patterns fit the body length of the majority of people that sew my patterns. So what I do is I make my prototype. My first prototype I make for Diana. And then I make, depending on how that looks, if there's a lot of things that need to fix on it or I need to fix on it, I'll make more prototypes to fit Diana to make sure that the core fit is good. And then when I'm happy with that, then I'll make a prototype for my body, for me. I'm the same size as Diana, I'm just elongated. So I wanna kinda explain how I do that because I know that a lot of people are taller or shorter and it's the same procedure um, regardless if you're taller or shorter. So I'll show you on my pattern how it functions. So I have these adjustment lines here and here. And what I do, I know based on experience and my measurements and everything, I know that I need to add two centimeters here and two centimeters here to make this look proportionally the same on me as it does on Diana. I'll show you how I kind of cut it. So if you are also taller or shorter, you can do it too. All right, so usually what I would do is I would draw, I would outline my pattern, and then when I come to my adjustment line, I just make a little marking and I scooch my pattern down as much as I want, outline the rest, and then next adjustment line, scooch it down. But now I can't do that because this fabric is like, I can't really make markings on it. So what I'll do instead is I will cut it until here and then I will just move it down and continue to move it down until I'm done. Okay, so now I'm at my adjustment line. I'll take my pins out. I will just cut my notches first, of course. Okay. Then I know, where is my ruler? Here it is. Then I know that I wanna go two centimeters down. So I will just put my ruler two centimeters. I line that with my adjustment line and I'll just hold it here so it doesn't move. And then I'll pull my pattern down two centimeters. Make sure that my straight grain is aligned. And then I'll just pin this again. And I go. I cut my bust notch, which has now moved down because my bust is lower down. So it makes sense that my bust would be lower down. That's why I have the adjustment line above the bust and then one above the waist. Now I'll do the same thing. Do two centimeters, hold it, and move down. And now I can finish cutting my piece. So my patterns are based on a body 
that measures 170 centimeters. I am 183, I'm six foot tall. So that's quite a lot taller than 100, 170 centimeters. If you are say 165, that's not that big of a difference that you would need to do something like this. But if you are, say that you're 160, then this might look a little long on you. So then you would do the same thing, but you would just move the pattern up. So you would, instead of moving it down the way that I have done here, you would just scooch it up and overlap your previous line or previous cutting. So here are my pieces. This is my lower front. And you can see here that I have this little pocket uh, placement that is going to be folded inwards. And that is going to be sewn to this front. And this is my pocket. And I decided to just continue my pocket in my main fabric because it was kind of visible. Uh, when I tied to the belt and stuff and I just don't want like my lining peeking through so this is going to be my pocket sack on the inside or the back and then I'm going to attach my pocket sack in lining fabric like so and then this one is going to go here so when you open the pocket it's going to look like this so back is main fabric and front is lining Maybe this is like too big because this is my arm and this is my sleeve. I don't know, but it's also not sewn together. So I don't know, maybe it's gonna work out. Okay, I'm just gonna sew it on and we'll see. Now that it's on, I obviously haven't attached the lining and the main fabric yet, as you can see. But now that it's on with the belt and everything, I feel like the pockets are too low. This distance here is too large. It looks kind of weird, a little bit awkward. And here I haven't, I don't have an adjustment line underneath the belt. So this is the distance it's going to be on like the pattern uh, without any lengthening of the body or shortening. So I need to bring this up. I'm gonna bring it up to here. But I think this looks pretty nice otherwise. Okay, I need to get back to work. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I have sewn a inside zip pocket. Hang on, I'll show you. Here we go, there it is. For my lining jacket. I had a plan to do it, but I figured I need a little pocket to put my phone and maybe credit card and some loose coins, I don't know, um, with a zipper because on here, I'm just gonna have a button. So I felt like it needed a little security. If you wanna learn how to do that, that's gonna be included in the pattern. I didn't film when I did it. I did, I filmed it, but I didn't film it here, but I made a YouTube short on how to do it. And it's also on my Instagram, at Studio Carolina Shearer. So before I start overlocking, I'm just gonna pin my lining and my main fabric together everywhere so that I'm sure that my overlocker catches both of the fabrics. Another reason why I'm pinning these together is because I want my seams to match up 
So like the shoulder seams and the raglan seams, I want them to match up the main fabric and the lining so they're not like shifted around and stuff. Cause that's not gonna look very professional, I think. Or I know, I know it's not gonna look professional. And I also forgot to update on the pockets, I think. Um, like the front pockets, these pockets that I moved up. They look way better now. I am happy with the position. Hang on, have I not ironed the seam? That's outrageous. Okay, I will go do that. Okay, here we go. It's looking pretty good. Got my little sipped pocket here. I got my two pockets here. I need to add my buttons too. So my idea is that there's gonna be buttons going down the center front. So you can button it like this and have like a big oversized jacket or you got the belt and you can also tie it like so. Well, obviously not like this, but you get it, you get it. I love it. I think that is just a great winter jacket and super nice and cozy. I love it. Are you ready for this? Check that out. That's so nice, no? Like, you can't respond, but I love it. I love it. I love the contrasting bias. I love the silhouette. I love the fact that there's no patched pockets. Like, that's way easier and cleaner, I feel. I love the sleeve. So what I get it in now is just add the buttons so that you could wear it like this. Like a much bigger volume, kind of, if that's what you, you're going for. And you could also button it and then tie it. Because I feel like buttons could be a nice detail. So I'm gonna add buttons here and on the pockets. Well, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna add buttons there, but that's the idea. I'm so happy. All right, so I will actually, I have to put buttons on this sample because it is my second prototype and I need to figure out like the button position and everything. So I will, I don't know why I'm filming my sleeve, but yeah, I will put buttons on this. And this is my kind of mustache. I've gone through it. I really like these buttons, um, but that's not gonna work because they are shank buttons. Like they will just hang and kinda, um, why can't I get it out? God, that's difficult. Okay, they will just kinda hang um, and not look very neat on it because it's a shank it needs to be attached on an edge and not like in the middle of a piece of fabric like i will do so these are out not using them unfortunately uh then i have these that are just way too yellow hang on i'll take my jacket off actually and show you okay, so i'm thinking with this contrasting black bias it would be really nice to complement that with a button so i have these buttons that I think work really nicely but then I'm like uh, is that too much is that gonna be stand out too much or is that gonna be a super nice compliment I don't know I don't know. I kind of like this, to be honest, but I'm not sure. So hang on. 
I also have Mother of Pearl. They look a little yellow, but they're white. So it could also go like this. I don't know. I feel spontaneously, I feel like I do prefer the black. I feel like the Mother of Pearl is maybe too classic vibe and maybe I am not so classic vibe. I don't know, like what is my vibe? Oh, okay, I don't know. I will put a, a poll up on my Instagram uh, at Studio Carolina Shear, if you want to go follow me there. Between these two buttons and see what the the public thinks. Okay, potential change of plans. So I put the question on my Instagram about the buttons, right? And I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to add buttons. I do really like it without buttons. And I feel like I have to because it's my second prototype and yada, yada, yada. But then a couple of people suggested using hooks or like hidden snap buttons on the inside, which is a great idea. And I didn't think of that at all. So I will check my stash to see if I have anything like that. If I do, I will use that. Okay, this is all that I have, five of these. So that's not gonna be enough. I need, I think I need five on the center front and then one on each pocket. So I will go with these black buttons. I like, the more I think about it, the more I like the idea of using them. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, I think it's gonna be nice. They are also the winner of the general public vote on my Instagram. So it's, um, it's all good. So I'll sew my buttonholes now and when I do buttonholes I go well you can do either vertical buttonholes or horizontal when I do buttonholes on a jacket like this it depends on the fit of the jacket but for example this jacket is kind of big I want it to have a lot of ease and be really comfortable so then I do horizontal buttonholes and that is because if I do vertical ones, then the button can't move with like, if you're, you breathe or you talk or you walk or whatever, it's just gonna kind of stay in place. Whereas if you do horizontal, then the button can actually like shift as your body moves and expands. So for a style like this, I will do horizontal buttonholes. And to mark my buttonhole, I'll just take an extra, like a spare button and I'll do a little mark on either side of it, because then that's gonna be a couple of millimeters um, larger than the diameter of the button, which is gonna allow the button to pass through easily without having too much ease or too little ease. And then for my pockets, there the buttonholes can go vertically because there I don't need any horizontal ease. And if anything, I would need vertical ease when I put my hand in and out of my pocket. So it makes more sense to do vertical buttonholes on the pockets. Another important thing to remember when making a buttonhole, especially a horizontal buttonhole, it doesn't really matter with the vertical buttonhole in the same way. It is that the center of your button is going to be at the edge of your buttonhole, nearest the garment edge, meaning that the edge of your button is going to be even closer to the garment edge. So, Originally, I had made my buttonhole marking here. That was where my buttonhole was going to end, meaning that that's where my the center of my button would have been. So if I put the center of my button there, you see how that is just kind of blending in to the biased edge, which is not nice. It's not what I want. It's too close to the, the edge of the button. It's too close to the edge of the garment. So I shifted my buttonhole a little bit further away, putting the center of my button here, giving me some white space around the button. So just remember that the edge of your button goes beyond or past the edge of your buttonhole. It's done! I am so excited about this. I've also like not put it on correctly. I wanted to show a little detail. Here on this one, I obviously used a white lining, but if one would iron this, 
here a little bit, just iron in that fold. Like if you would use a lining that's kind of fun, I think that would be beautiful. Anyway, I'm gonna show you like the montage of me walking, you know, all happy and pretty. So you get the full experience. And then I will also make my digital pattern now. I'll make the pattern file. I'll make the sewing tutorial so that you can make this jacket too. And I'm calling this jacket the all weather jacket. It was a bit back and forth between names, but in the end, I think that this jacket is a really good jacket for all seasons. And I want the name to highlight that. So we're going with all weather other jacket. Check out my Instagram for our release date at Studio Carolina Shearer, same name as here, and I'll also link it in the description when the pattern is available on my website. I think that's it for now. I'll talk to you later and uh, be good. Oh, oh, I forgot to say, please like and subscribe if you like my content because that helps me out immensely and it also is just motivating for me to know that we're hanging out. It's nice. Um, yeah, okay, now I'm done. All right, see you later. Bye.